Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Jeffrey Lyles welcoming you to a new installment of Lyles Figure Files, part of the Lyles Movie Files brand. DC fandom was Saturday, and it was a lot of news, a lot of new updates on films that we've known were coming down the pipeline from Warner Brothers slash DC. Really excited to see some updates on Shazam. Those costumes look really great, and the bad guys, really inspired. Aquaman's coming along, but I think the big news was... Well, I guess there's two big news. We got to see Michael Keaton's Batman tease in the Flash. I really like the look of that different Flash outfit that looks a little bit closer to the comic book with the white logo on the lightning bolt. Shorter haircut from Ezra Miller. I just wish that since we had two Barry Allens, one of them could have been blonde like the comic. Maybe that's a post-production thing they'll fix. And You know, fingers crossed, right? But the other, of course, was Matt Reeves, the Batman. And it's going to be a tongue twister all the time, making sure I say the Batman for this film. But we got to see an actual trailer. This film's coming out in March 2022. I'm excited because the trailers managed to show a lot without saying a lot. And the more I see of it, the more excited I am. Matt Reeves did an amazing job with that Planet of the Apes trilogy. I'm very curious to see where he goes with Batman, although I may need to talk with him about some of his character designs. McFarlane Toys revealed three of their Batman figures. And it's always weird when I say McFarlane Toys because I'm like, Todd McFarlane. But McFarlane Toys is the company, even though Todd is up front and center, hyping up everything, showing everything, showing how cool everything is. And I just love his energy, his passion for these figures just in general. And it's always fun hearing him talk about what's coming down the pipeline from them. So anyway, here's the first wave of the Batman series. Catwoman is first up. I love how much detail they put into it. The texturing, the paneling. There's all kinds of good details here. I really wish they had included an alternate Zoe Kravitz, Selena Kyle head sculpt just because this design is a little plain. And I think having that option to have her mask and unmask would have done a lot. So I was looking at this figure and I was thinking like, you know, this head sculpt's okay, but I feel like there's not a lot of obstacles that would have stopped McFarlane Toys from doing what Toy Biz did way back in the day with the very first Spider-Man movie figures they had the wrestler version and they had it where you could put the rubber mask over top the toby Maguire head sculpt to get the wrestler look and you could take it off pull it back if you've seen a lot of my wrestling photography you've seen that figure in the back but i think that's something they could have done that would have really enhanced the value of this figure giving you a two-on-one kind of thing and just work with something kind of basic with this design to make it a little bit cooler more interesting and just show off some things they could do so i really wish they would have incorporated that into this figure uh it's cool looking at this whip looks like it may have a little bit of posability that's always a problem with catwoman figures because it's just like a limp piece of plastic basically with so many and she'd look a little bit closer you see my biggest problem with this figure those ball jointed ankles look ridiculous I'm not, I've never been a big fan of how McFarlane Toys does those ankle joints or with the ball joint section anyway, because it kind of makes them harder to stand, a key thing with any figure. But I think in this case, it ruins some of the aesthetics because the ball joint is massive to allow for her to have all the articulation of other figures. But because Selena is smaller, slender, it sticks out and looks kind of goofy. But I'm not a fan anyway, so... I don't know if there was a way they could have fixed that, but it just looks bad on this figure. And again, I just really wish they could have done something else to give her a little bit more pop. You see all the texturing, you see all the paneling. It really looks good. McFarlane Toys is the best value of figures right now, of any line. You get a seven inch figure, really high detailed sculpts, pretty good articulation for the most part for twenty dollars we're seeing everybody else go up to at least twenty one dollars in some cases they're going 22.99 23 etc it's nice to get a figure that's this much plastic this much detail for a really reasonable price so yeah i really wish we could have gotten an alternate head sculpt but kudos to mcfarland toys for keeping that twenty dollar price tag for us collectors 
All right, so next up is Riddler. I hate this design. I feel like it's way too much for a guy who would be just fine and comic accurate in a green suit. And even if it was just a green jacket and black or purple pants, that'd be fine too. I think this is Matt Reeves going a little bit too creative. And the design is just fine for as far as what the figure did based off of what we've seen so far from the film. Um, it's a guy in a big overcoat wearing a goofy looking mask and having his glasses slash goggles on the top of him. I think they've done a really nice job with what they had to work with. You see the lining or the pockets, the belt, the, the buckles. It looks good. I just hate this design. And it's too bad that he didn't come with the duct tape that you see in the back here because that's something we've seen in the trailer. And that would have been a nice additional touch. All right, so here's the man himself, the Batman. Or we'll just call him Batman for sake of simplicity. I like these little crossbow bolts that he's got on his left gauntlet. I don't know if he's actually going to use them like that, but I'm kind of curious to see what's incorporated here. And with movie figures, it's interesting because I feel like so often the figures provide the best look at what the actual costume looks like. On screen, they're in shadows. You can't appreciate all of the detailed work that goes into setting up these costumes. But this figure actually showcases what's going on here. And it really looks like a nice translation of a new version of Batman. The only thing that's kind of throwing me off is those eyes. I'll show a better picture of them in a second, but it looks like he's looking to the left, which is weird. As always, keep your figures looking forward because that's the the version. That's where most people are going to have their figures looking. You don't need a figure looking off to the side anywhere or looking up or down, etc. So you see all these panels. I appreciate the knee pads. That makes sense for a Batman outfit. Uh, the cape looks like it's hanging low. Okay. Doesn't have as much detail as I like for Batman, but it's fine. The grapple gun actually looks like it would fit on his utility belt. And I'm curious if that's going to be something that McFarlane Toys incorporated into this figure, like with a little clasp or a pin or you know something that it can actually plug into the utility belt. Here is the main look at this guy, and he looks fantastic with all this armor, plating, the bat signal the shoulder pads it actually look like shoulder pads this looks like what batman would probably look like if somebody actually decided to do this in real life um again the eyes are throwing me off but everything else really looks decent with this outfit kind of wish the cow piece was a little bit tighter so we see more of that and not so much of his jawline i think that's throwing me off just a bit but it's a pretty decent looking outfit and a really nice take on this. I'm very interested in seeing this on the big screen when we see the Batman March 4th, 2022. These figures will be out in January. I have some pre-order links if you're interested. If you haven't already done that, uh, that's always helpful for me. So check it out. So we have McFarlane toys. They're cranking out the DC universe, but he's also been hard at work with his Spawn universe. And we've got this next round of figures. And I have been like oh these look cool they're all right but i'm really close to just going in and buying these figures because they look amazing like the level of sculpt the detail on these guys it's incredible and this this dark redeemer figure is a nice one to kind of push me over the edge to yeah okay i want in on these guys like you check out these wings i imagine we'll see them reused for hawkman eventually with the dc multiverse line the detail work on that sword is crazy. The armor, everything. This is a nice looking figure. And I really like the black and the silver color scheme. And then you check out the wings. They've got like four different colors going on here. We've got light blue, some gray, some dark gray, white, maybe a little black in there. The wash is just like, whoa, check out all this detail. And the spiked helmet really nice looking figure and I think they've done a really nice job with this I know they've already done a redeemer figure but this dark redeemer really sells it for me I really like this outfit next up is soul crusher soul crusher is another figure I know absolutely nothing about but all this detail you see the gals on the on the left leg holding up a pouch get a little shred there on the pants the guns the gas mask, how the cape is flowing, the armor plating. This is a nice looking figure and it's just so much work put into it that 
I mean, check out the design work on the boots. This is a really good job. I like how the cape doesn't sit symmetrical. It's like slanting to the side here on the right shoulder. Really cool. I like the work done on that mask too. All the, I mean, that, those guns are major. Like the actual bayonet deal with the modern, kind of looks like an M16, I guess. My gun knowledge is like long been restricted to what G.I. Joe figures have, but that looks cool. Being able to actually hold the gun in that kind of pose is also impressive too. But again, you see all that texturing work that McFarlane Toys is known for. It's just a fantastic looking figure. Really nicely done. Last on this wave is Gunslinger Spawn. And that reminds me I need to review Gunslinger Spawn, the comic book. But man, look at this big torrent gun. The gauntlets with all the chains. This, this jacket is kind of giving me Trigon vibes. Um, you know, he is also a stampede, the spurs, the chain. I mean, this, this is another fantastic looking figure and the hat with the skulls, the guns. I mean, the classic Western stance here is a really well done figure, really well put together. You see the double jointed elbows. Like I said, I, I don't, I'm not like the biggest spawn fan out there, but at some point, a figure just looks cool, and it's like, well, this looks so cool, I gotta get it. It's kind of how it was with the, um, geez, the the Hasbro line that, of course, they, the Overwatch that they did for like two seconds, and then they stopped. But these spawn figures, man, they did a really fantastic job, and I'm just like, eh, I don't know, I kind of want it on these guys. And the packaging looks really great too. Got that whole look of the the Western hero going off into the sunset just i really like these guys so i may have to to cave and, and get in on this but one line that i'm way all in is mattel's wwe series and thanks to an online retailer we have what may be a very probably likely outdated lineup for elite wave 92 and 93 let's break them down so first up is one guy who's absolutely there guaranteed definitely will be part of this wave Rey Mysterio Jr or Rey Mysterio I know for me old school fans he's Rey Mysterio Jr but he's Rey Mysterio now in WWE so anyway um I assume we'll get another modern version because there's still a lot of these looks that we haven't gotten from Mattel yet but I would not say no to a WCW or an ECW version of Rey next up is The Fiend who I assume we won't be getting again this is just one of those subject to change lineups I assume this will be one of those changes he's been gone for a minute but maybe Mattel is convinced WWE listen let us crank out one more wave of this guy to get our money back on the sculpt and he'll make a lot of money for us so we'll all be happy so I don't know I still haven't gotten a fiend figure I mean I kind of feel like that ship has sailed for me in terms of my interest he looks cool but they never did anything that much with him I mean he lost to Goldberg so I'm kind of like eh so anyway so fiend may maybe not coming and then another guy who probably won't be coming is Adam Cole I assume this is where we're going to get that camo Cole to match the rest of the Undisputed Era from that War Games um this is this is a real bad call, bad decision on Mattel's part to have waited so long to get this figure out or to make Roderick Strong in the TakeOver War Games attire. They could have solved all this problem by just making Roderick in his normal black, yellow, black and yellow NXT Undisputed Era look. They would have solved the problem, but they decided now nah, let's go with this one specific look that doesn't tie in or work with anything else. And they started, they compounded the problem by doing Fish and O'Reilly in that same attire with no plan to have Cole come out in this camo look. So now we've got him slated. The camouflage attire is the chase. So even if you do see this guy, maybe you won't find him in the camouflage, which still just totally misses the point of why you wait so long to get your figures out, especially if they're part of a faction, a team wearing matching attire rant over next up no it's not iron no it's not barry it's rick flair but i showed this picture because i still need a barry windham with long hair that fits in with the four horsemen 
not the 1990 version, but this one, the absolute best incarnation of the Four Horsemen with Flair, Anderson, Blanchard, and Wyndham. So still need that. But anyway, this Ric Flair, uh, long hair. We just got one with un, un, <laughs> undisputed, the ultimate edition version. That figure's fine. I just wish we needed just wish we needed we need a head sculpt that's a neutral natural closed mouth expression we have one that's smiling kind of weird and there's no angry or serious version so if we do get this flair and again i'm gone with three figures who are no longer with wwe so this lineup may be total shambles totally reworked by the time it actually comes out to stores but I'm just working what we got and hopefully we get another flare because I need one with a more serious head scope or a better version of that hair from the 1995 through 99 era when you know he was getting jobbed out to the NWO like the horseman punked out everybody in the mid 80s. All right. So anyway, so that's my hope for flare just like that to go along with Arn and hopefully soon a better version of Barry. This one we know is coming, though. Charlotte Flair. She's not going anywhere. She's still got a stranglehold on one of the titles. Uh, maybe this look. I missed out on the un ultimate. I don't know why. I think the problem was the Undisputed Era. I mentioned them first, and now I'm doing a tongue twist with the Ultimate Edition. I missed out on that Ultimate Edition version of, Sh of Charlotte. But if she is an Elite 92, she will have the double-jointed elbows, the double-jointed knees, which for the most part is what the enhancements were for the female figures. So maybe I missed out on the Ultimate Edition version, but the Ultimate one should be, the Elite version should be just fine. And next up is Scarlet. And yeah, I went a long time trying to find a good picture of Scarlet for everybody. Um, we've gotten this look in a basic figure already, but an Elite version hopefully would have more detail more of the chain actually being sculpted, the spikes showing up, maybe even the laces on the tights section. Choker probably not gonna happen, but yeah, it's a good look for Scarlet. I have the basic figure just cause worst comes to worst, they actually make her an elite. I've got a crowd version, but you know, can't ever really have too many Scarlet figures, right? All right, so that's the lineup for Elite 92. Like I said, half of that wave is probably gonna shift up, change up. Maybe like, why are we getting another John Cena? Why are we getting another Randy Orton? And it's probably why, because half of them are somewhere else. So for Elite 93, this is a figure that I know we're going to see. We've got Seth Rollins slated. Maybe he gets bumped up to 92, so I shouldn't say he's definitely going to be in part 93. Um, Seth Rollins is going nowhere. He's still part of WWE. Maybe we'll get him in this uh, SummerSlam 2021 jacket with the kind of Michael Jackson look. He's coming for sure. Another one is T-Bar. This is Donovan Dijakovic. I really wish they would just make an elite version of him. We got him in basic with his cool kind of ROH era outfit. Now I got this goofy tag team with him and Mace and they're being used terribly. I just wish he would go to AEW or go back to ROH because they actually knew how to use him. So anyway, T-Bar is coming um, probably in this outdated retribution attire maybe they'll make the mask removable who knows next up is carrying cross so i've been holding off on getting this figure because i wanted a cross with double jointed elbows because he's one of those guys who uses a lot of submission moves and needed desperately the double jointed elbows i am hoping he is not gladiator version cross and i'm really crossing my fingers that i didn't wait too long that i missed the window Hopefully, it'll just be this guy from NXT without any funky skirts or any craziness to his look and his outfit. And with a head sculpt like this, intense, crazy, ready to maul and demolish everybody and crush every NXT fanboy's dreams because they remember back to the golden era before he regained the title where we were getting good matches with Finn Balor and everybody. So that's my hope for Cross that we just get him in this look. Knowing my luck with figures, it'll probably be the skirt and the full stupid gladiator mask and the whole ridiculous outfit. But this is what I want. Next up is Cesaro. It's been a long time since he's had an elite figure. So he's overdue. Uh, he didn't change his look too much. So he's, he's a situation where it'll be good to have a new updated version of him, even though 
he's not a guy who changes his look remarkably so every figure feels like it's outdated so he's come into the line as well next up is ricky steamboat i put this look down because this is how i want ricky steamboat no headband that is absolutely key basically every figure mattel is done of ricky steamboat for whatever reason has a headband and we know they have the technology to make a removable headband which would be just fine but for whatever reason we just have a headband sculpt for every ricky steamboat and i want him in these green tights from when he beat flair at chi town rumble 1989 the one and only chi town rumble so i want this look no headband full elite articulation double jointed elbows of course um maybe a jacket but yeah this is the version i want we get a 1993 version steamboat a 92 when he's fighting the dangerous alliance but we've already gotten red we've gotten white several times we've gotten two reds green is the big missing attire unless they decide to go with those more intricate yellow and green accent tights which i kind of feel is too much to ask for mattel at this point let's just go green no headband maybe even getting the world title in a jacket and if they wanted to go really crazy they'd go with the baby dragon but you know whatever like his son not the actual little dragon he was carrying around in uh, wwf and raquel gonzalez rounds out this wave elite 93 i assume we'll get her as nxt women's champion Hopefully they've got that scale correct so she's not the same height as Dakota Kai because she needs to tower over her. The um, I mean, they've, they've done decent things, but I, I felt like she needs to have a huge musculature. She needs to have big shoulders, broad. Maybe they use a china sculpt for her because I think that's where they could go with her and this would work. And that would take care of the problems they have with some other figures, like the Bianca Belair, who was a little too slim. Um, but yeah, definitely need to do that with Raquel, because she's a big powerhouse figure in NXT, one of their big stars, and they need to do her right. All right, so that was it for the WWE front. Hot Toys did release, reveal a figure from Black Widow that it was starting to look like we may not get. But we did get our reveal of Yelena. And so we've gotten so far, we've seen Natasha and her white outfit. We've seen Taskmaster. We've seen on display at different exhibits, the Red Guardian. This is our first look at Yelena. She looks good. She's got the baton. She's got her hair pulled back. I think Hot Toys has really stepped up its likeness of actors over the past year. We saw it with the Shang-Chi figures. Here again with Elena, that is a perfect likeness of Florence Pugh. Just outstanding work there. From the hair, the eyes, the nose and mouth, that's her. There's no, eh, if you look from the side, if you kind of squint, that's that on her. No problem. She's got her green uh, pouch filled vest that she's going to hand off to her sister so she can wear it at Civil War. Got small guns, got the batons. Like, again, that likeness is amazing. Hot Toys does great stuff when they're motivated. My only problem now is their price point has started to go a little bit too high. Like everything else, they're, they've they increased their price. But with Hot Toys, they were already a high expensive price point and now they've gone at the, are you crazy? I'm not paying that much for a figure. But for those who do, this is a really nice looking figure. I wish she had a little bit more accessories, but really nicely done here. And you know, if I happen to win the lottery or something, I'm definitely gonna pre-order because I think she'll be around for a long time in the MCU to come. And this is a nice first look at her. All right, so that's it on the news. Of course, as usual, I've got some new figures to show off and all that good stuff. So let me break those down. First up, Sid. Justice. Now, this is from Elite 86, and I think this head sculpt they've already used before, but they've done a really nice job with this guy. He is in referee attire from SummerSlam 91, where he was refereeing the match with Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan against the Triangle of Terror, Colonel Mustafa, Sergeant Slaughter, and General Adnan. So, of course, why not have him up here at the same time? Mustafa and Sid Justice. 
the really cool thing about this figure though, why I was really excited when they revealed it was you take off the referee shirt, you take off the pants and you've got yeah, see, of course, the pants would be the hardest part of this figure to remove in this case because I could have rehearsed this and done this a million times. And this one time would be the time that it was super hard to take off. But bam, not too bad. He is in his red singlet attire from his stint with the four horsemen. And I think this is really cool. I love when Mattel shifts up and gives us a two-on-one figure. So we've got a referee, Sid Justice, and we've got a WCW, Sid Vicious. I know I'm greedy, but it would have been really cool to have him with a stretcher, too, so he could do the whole taking everybody out, breaking Brian Pillman's neck. But I think they did a really nice job. Only issue, and I do not think you can see it really well here, the torso is painted. So everything else is a regular skin tone, but the torso is painted. And it looks goofy. I hate when they do this. I just wish they could sculpt everything with plastic and then paint the rest of everything else on there because it's goofy to it but yeah so Sid Justice I've already teased him here's Connor Mustafa I think they did a nice job of course he can't have all the crazy medals that he had back in the day there and he's got his beret that comes off this actually comes off too I appreciate every time we get cloth materials from Mattel because I had the Colonel Mustafa from Jax and he was not able to have his ring attire. I'm sure you cannot make out the camouflage, even if my camera would be more cooperative with us because it's really poorly applied. It should be really prominent, but it's not. He's got his curled boots though, and that's always cool. So I wish they had gone with a more serious head sculpt because Mustafa was not a smiling, joking kind of character. And I don't know why they decided to go with that. It's really puzzling to me. Billy Gunn got him. So this is the first of the DX army. And this is my first figure from Legend Series 12. Here are the rest of these guys. I'm probably not going to get the Piper because I just don't like the head sculpt. I uh, got Nash on pre-order. And JYD, I'm probably going to get both versions, the red and blue, because JYD is one of my favorite childhood wrestlers. I think they did an awesome job with this head sculpt. This really looks like the you know the figure here, which is really nice to see. Um, but they did a really good job with this. This comes off. He's in white tights. He's missing the lips on his crotch because I guess impressionable mothers would feel too much about a guy that goes suck it, having lips on his crotch area. So of course, after I saw these guys in stores, my pre-order from not pre-order because I was able to take advantage of that great target sale where you buy, spend 50, get $10 off. So I got the Ultimate Edition Rock from Wave 10. Now I've got the Wave 3, I think it was, version. This one is Rock without the hair now. Full Samoan tattoo. And I wish he came with a little bit more stuff, but really nice job on this era of the great one. And I'll be doing the review on him real soon along with his wave mate and Wrestlemania two-time opponent, John Cena. And the heads were a little bit supersized on the Ultimate Edition 5 Cena. I don't think they've sized them down anymore, but I think they've done some enhancements on the printing. So they look much better, especially that default one, because the first one kind of looked like, I have got a secret. A little creepy head sculpt. Speaking of creepy, this portrait here is really weird looking. I don't know what they were doing with that, but yeah. So that's what I'll be reviewing very soon on LylesMovieFiles.com. And so again, Hasbro Pulse is this weekend. Maybe if I'm feeling really motivated, I will have a preview of what I hope to see at Hasbro Pulse. Um, there's a lot of lines coming out, lots of stuff to talk about. So I will definitely be doing that over the course of the weekend. But maybe I can crank out one more episode before then, a little preview of what's in store. So for now, hope you enjoy your uh, time out in the figure house. Hope you have a lot of success tracking down some figures. Thank you, as always, for watching. This episode of Laos Figure Files has been filed.